Hello, welcome to Insights for Health with Dr. Ree. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about foods that become more powerful with cooking. Uh, should we insist on raw vegetables when it comes to wellness? Not necessarily. So, uh, depending on your symptoms, for example, uh, for scurvy, you need uh, vitamin C. For poor night vision, you may need beta carotene. Uh, for poor wound healing, you need vitamin C. For presbyopia, you may need lutein. So depending on the type of phytochemicals or vitamins, you may need different type of cooking methods. So uh, if you're trying to eat uh, vitamins that are more water soluble, you need to eat raw. And if you want to eat uh, vitamins that are more fat soluble, it's probably better to cook. And so for uh, beta carotene or lycopene, you probably need to cook your carrots or you need to cook your tomato sauce. And better than to uh, cooking, uh, if you dry, if you sun dry tomatoes, you even have even more lycopene. So let's look at the research here. So there are about six types of cooking methods that were investigated. Uh, boiling, pressure cooking, oven baking, microwaving, grilling, and frying. And so influence of these, dif these different cooking methods on antioxidant activity of vegetables uh, was actually investigated. So this is boiling, this is pressure cooking, this is oven baking, this is microwaving, uh, griddle, griddling or grilling, and deep frying. So, uh, same amount of vegetables, 500 grams, uh, uh, were used in each cooking method. And for boiling, 1,000 cc's, or four cups of water was used. For pressure cooking, about a little over a cup uh, of water was used. Uh, for oven baking, no water was used, but the temperature setting was 392 Fahrenheit. For microwaving, no water was used, but it was used at uh, medium power. And then for griddling, no oil, uh, and for frying, three, uh, 100 cc's of olive oil was used at 336 degrees Fahrenheit. So these cooking methods were used to bring out the best flavor and best color. And also the time, uh, different time uh, period was involved. For boiling, as little as 10 minutes to as much as 47 minutes uh, was um, used for boiling. Uh, pressure cooking on average of about five minutes. Uh, for microwaving about uh, three, to, uh, three to four minutes um, uh, and four and a half minutes probably at the max. And for boiling um, no more than, uh, or I'm sorry, oven baking no more than 47 minutes. And for griddling about uh, anywhere from uh, 13 minutes to uh, about 19 minutes. For frying as little as seven minutes to as much as uh, 17, 18 minutes. So these were different uh, time periods of cooking. And depending on the cooking methods, antioxidant activities were observed. And so this is a pretty complicated, complicated, complicated looking chart. And uh, uh, dashes actually mean uh, no change, depend, even uh, you know, depending on uh, type of cooking, there was no, no change in the antioxidant capacity. Uh, if there was a minus in front of a number, that means there was a minus a loss. And then if there was no sign, that means that was that much loss. So minus loss means actually gaining of antioxidant activity. So uh, in a nutshell, here's the conclusion. For boiling, antioxidant activities of 50% um, loss was experienced when peas, cauliflower, and zucchini were boiled. Uh, 30 to 50% loss in spinach, garlic, broccoli, carrots, and green beans. And 0% loss in artichoke, eggplant, and onions and increased antioxidant capacity in asparagus. And then you have pressure cooking. And with pressure cooking, 25 to 50% loss for most vegetables, 5 to 25% loss for broad beans and spinach, and 0% loss in Swiss chards, beetroot, onion, artichoke, and asparagus, and increased antioxidant uh, capacity for eggplant. So eggplant, you can actually cook and the, uh, the antioxidant capacity goes up. Uh, next one is oven baking. So you have 30 to 50% loss in carrots, Brussels sprouts, leek, cauliflower, peas, and zucchini. 5 to 30% loss in broad beans, celery, beetroot, garlic, 
and 0% loss in artichoke, asparagus, broccoli, and pepper. And antioxidant capacity was increased uh, when uh, green beans, eggplant, maize, corn, uh, Swiss chard, and spinach were cooked in the oven. And microwaving, most people think microwaving actually like brings out radiation, but microwave just means it's about the same wavelength that water molecule, water molecule vibrates. And so uh, when the microwave uh, sends out energy to uh, shake the water molecule, water molecule vibrates and it heats up. So uh, basically when you're cooking uh, vegetables in the microwave oven, all you're doing is shaking the water molecule inside the vegetables and that's how you heat it up. So you're just basically boiling just the water inside the vegetables without adding any water. So there is no radiation, it's safe unless microwave is leaking. So 50% was, uh, 50 was, uh, of antioxidant uh, capacity was lost with cauliflower. Uh, 30 to 50% loss was with most vegetables. 5 and 30% loss in broad beans and beetroot respectively. And 0% loss in artichoke, asparagus, garlic, onion, and spinach. And there was increased antioxidant capacity in eggplant, maize, the corn, pepper, and Swiss chards. So even microwave, if used properly at medium power, you can actually have a lot of benefits. And griddling with no oil, 30, to 50 per, 30 and 50 percent loss with Brussels sprouts and peas, respectively. 50 to 30 percent loss with most vegetables. Zero percent loss with artichoke, beetroot, celery, eggplant, garlic, and maize. And increased antioxidant capacity in green bean, Swiss chard, spinach, asparagus, broccoli, and onions. So griddling is a good way to cook. Finally, deep frying um, uh, at uh, 336 uh, degree Fahrenheit with olive oil about, of about 100 cc's, about 50% antioxidant uh, capacity was lost with zucchini, uh, 30 to 50% loss with leek, onion, uh, pea, Brussels sprouts, and pepper, and 5 to 30% loss with most vegetables, and 0% loss with Swiss chards, artichoke, and green beans and increased antioxidant capacity in eggplant. So uh, with all the uh, cooking methods, uh, a lot of the antioxidant capacity is preserved and sometimes increased. But uh, frying at a uh, temperature greater than 130, 120 degrees Celsius, uh, it actually can uh, create some carcinogen called acrylamide. So when, uh, when you're uh, frying vegetables, uh, with uh, you know starch, um, then a starchy food, especially like uh, uh, potato, uh, like French fries, can actually uh, create acrylamide because of the cooking method. And so I would recommend not really frying your vegetables uh, if you can help it. But most of the time, any kind of cooking preserves some or most of the antioxidants. So it's more important to eat variety of, of, of vegetables, um, not worrying too much about the cooking methods. But if you're trying to eat water-soluble vitamins, try to eat raw. If you're trying to eat fat-soluble vitamins or phytochemicals, you need to cook. So here's a little summary that you can kind of remember. So for cauliflower, cabbage, broccoli, radish, lettuce, they have a lot of water-soluble vitamins, so you need to eat as fresh as possible. Uh, carrots, pumpkin, garlic, bean, tomato, maize, and spinach, you can cook and you will actually uh, are going to be able to uh, intake more uh, antioxidants or vitamins that are fat-soluble, and so you can actually have a variety of um, types of um, vegetables depending on how uh, and what you feel like eating, right? Because you can't always eat raw. And then so once again, uh, water-soluble vitamins are vitamin B, vitamin C, and many phytochemicals, and fat-soluble vitamins are A, D, E, K. So fat-soluble vitamins uh, can be cooked, and they actually can, um, uh, can be cooked inside uh, water, and you can still consume a lot of it without destroying any of it, or just a little, you know, little bit of it. Water-soluble vitamins, you do not want to cook if you can help it. Uh, you, or lightly saute or gently steam, so you can take most of the water-soluble vitamins um, that you can. So, uh, conclusion, uh, 
If your uh, vitamins and uh, phytochemicals are water soluble, water usually um, can cause loss uh, because a lot of the vitamins actually can be dissolved in the water and lost in the water unless you drink the water. Or basically if you increase the temperature uh, too much, then you can destroy the vitamins as well. But if you have fat soluble uh, vitamins or phytochemicals, you could actually boil in water and even increase the temperature um, uh, a little bit and you can still have the benefit of uh, the antioxidant activities of these vegetables uh, without, uh, without much loss and sometimes with increased activity. So with this in mind, I would like to encourage you to eat more vegetables, not worrying about the types of cooking methods except frying, right? So until next time, eat as much of the rainbow colored vegetables as possible and, uh, not, and don't worry too much about whether it's uh, raw or cooked. Uh, unless they're overcooked, all vegetables are uh, much better to be eaten rather than just left alone. Alright, so until next time, stay healthy.